All right, welcome back students. In this video, I'm going to show you how to complete a basic Hello World project in JavaScript. This is typically one of the first projects you do in any new programming language. First of all, you're going to see on the screen here, I have my brackets started up. This is the IDE or independent development environment that we're going to use in this class. So make sure you've downloaded and configured brackets according to my instructions in another video. I will put a link to those videos at the bottom of this video so you can go and watch those first. One of the first most important things you need to do is set up your working folder. I'm going to go over to my uh, Windows Explorer here. I'm working on a PC by the way and I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this Hello World. Typically you don't want to put any spaces in the names of your folders or your files so write it the way I have it there. And this is where all of the files for our project are going to live in this folder. Going back to brackets now to set up your project, go to File, Open Folder, and go and choose the folder you just created. Here we see the folder I just created. We will select that here and choose the Select Folder button. Now you see over on the left, it references this project and there's no files in it, so we don't see anything, but we're gonna change that right now by right-clicking and choosing New File. Go ahead and call it hello world.html. You need to have an HTML file in order to run your JavaScript. So we'll create an HTML as a container for our project. A few things you want to make sure you've done. It has to have the .html extension on the end of it here. And down here in the lower right, you can see a place where you can choose the language that you're writing in. It should have chosen HTML by default because you put the HTML extension on the end of the file name. But if not, you'll want to change that there to HTML. Now, if you've installed the Emmet extension, which I talk about in my other video, all you have to do is uh, go exclamation point and tab. And like magic, it creates the basic structure of an HTML file for you in this hello world.html file. This is great. And so I encourage you to use Emmet if you can. If you don't have Emmet installed, then you'll just need to type all of this uh, into your document. Go ahead and pause the video and type what you see into your document. All right, let's uh, give it a title. Hello World in JavaScript is what we're doing in this assignment. All right, let's give it a little bit of HTML. I'm going to use an H1 document, or sorry, H1, H1 tag. Uh, just give it a title. How about an H2? Something like that. Just uh, that. Uh, then, of course, we need a little bit of directions. We're going to put uh, a button on this page. And so uh, we'll get to that in a minute. I'm gonna put that down below there and maybe a little bit of instructions like uh, click the button below to start the program. Okay. And we want the button there at the bottom of all of that. We'll, we'll set up our button in a minute. In a minute, we'll come back to that. Okay, in order for our program to work, we need to have JavaScript, but we're not going to write the JavaScript in this HTML file. We're going to do it a little bit more of a professional way, which is to create a separate JS file that we're going to put all our JavaScript in. It is possible to put your JavaScript uh, right into the HTML document. You can do it that way, but I'm going to have us put it in a separate file because it's a little bit better way to do it, and it allows the uh, brackets uh, and the um, JS hint extension that we're using to uh, properly debug our JavaScript. And in order for that to happen, you have to have your JavaScript in a separate file. All right, I'm going to go uh, over here and create a new JS file. We're going to call this with the same name, hello world, but JS, hello world.js is our new file. And you're going to see that it has a different icon here representing it. This is a JS file. Now to make sure again, once again, we'll come down and make sure that JS or JavaScript has been chosen as our, our uh, language over here, which it has. All right, we are ready to go. Now we're going to go back to our HTML file. And it's uh, the next step is to link our HTML file to our JavaScript file. Until we do that, these two files won't talk to each other. So we'll do that. We'll use the script tag. 
And inside the opening script tag, so inside that opening tag, we need to put the source attribute. And the source attribute equals, and then you can see, put the equal sign, double quotes, and then choose the Hello World JS that uh, is listed there. Okay, and that's all it takes to link this HTML file up to the JS file, the external JS file that we're using. Now, the last step in linking our HTML to our JS file in this program is to link our button to the JS file. Okay. Um, so uh, to do that, we're going to create a function in the JS file. And then when we click on this button, we're going to call that function. Let's go over to the JS file and start out by creating a function. We'll just call it start. You really could call it anything you want, but we're going to use uh, something straightforward like that. We have now in our JS file, we have a start function that will be called when we click the button. Go back to the HTML file. Inside the button, we're going to create what's called an on click event. And when we do that, it's going to call start function. So the word start with the parentheses included will uh, set it up so that the button calls the start function. One last thing with the button, uh, the button will be an empty button that, that doesn't have any words on it unless we put something here. So let's just um, uh, hit, call it the enter button, for example. And now the word enter will be on the button, the face of the button, and we'll see that. So we're, we're, we're pretty good here. We've got a lot going on. So let's save this all. And when we hit control S or save, we can see it reconfigures everything, sets up the um, indenting properly. And again, that's an extension that I showed you uh, that you should install uh, in your brackets. So go watch my other video. And uh, this is this is looking pretty good. Uh, now, in order to test this, um, we're going to go over and click the lightning bolt live preview button here on the upper right corner, and it will open your browser of choice. Uh, I've got Chrome set up and it will run the program. All right, just like that, we have an HTML file loaded into a browser and uh, it's looking just like we so we have their H1 uh, tag, the H2, we have a paragraph and we have a button that says enter on it. And when I click on this button, it will uh, call that function, start function that we created in our JS file. Uh, let's click it and nothing happens. The reason nothing happens is because we didn't write anything inside that start function. A hello world program in any language is designed just to practice doing input and output into your language of choice. And so in JavaScript, we want to demonstrate here how to do basic input, basic output. We're going to start with the output. There are two primary ways that we will do output in JavaScript in uh, this class. Uh, the first is to use the console. And um, so we're going to go ahead and write console.log. What this does is log or outputs a message to the web console. And so console.log parentheses and inside the parentheses, you're going to put the message uh, the words, the text, the numbers, whatever it is, it's just a string because it's contained within quotes. Uh, the string, uh, we're going to output that using console.log. So hello world, again, is our message. We're going to use console.log and put that out to the web console. Let's save this. And um, we do have, I have my JS hint open down here. Uh, it's going to give me a little hints. I forgot my semicolon on this line. Let's go ahead and put that in. And it also says console dot, uh, console is not defined. You can ignore that error. Let's go back to the HTML file. You have to be in the HTML file with that saved and updated before you hit your live preview button to see your results. Click the enter button. Now, I don't see anything right off, but what I want to do, again, we, we told the, uh, program to log our message to the console win window. So we have to have the console open. Press your F12 key on your keyboard and it will open up a window here, a uh, sidebar, um, and make sure you've got console selected. There's lots of different things you can select over on the left and we want to have console selected only. And then you can see, sure enough, there is my message, hello world. And it's coming from hello world.js file, which is just what we expect. Now you do see one error at the top. Your web, web socket connection to uh, has failed. You can ignore that error message. It has nothing to do with what we're doing. So console.log is one way in which we can output 
to our web application. The other way we can do that is use uh, window.alert. And we'll see how that renders in just a second. Let's do the same thing and do hello world uh, again in this message here or in this line of code. And let's save that. And you, if your HTML file is already open, you can just jump over to that file. And when you do, as long as you've saved your program in the other uh, in brackets, this will be refreshed for you. If you're not sure if it's refreshed, you can click the refresh button up here. Um, and now let's go ahead and click our enter button. Okay. I click the enter button and you can see I got both the console hello world here, but I also have this little window that's opened up that says hello world again. When I use window.alert, I get a message dialog box that opens in the browser and has an OK button that when I click it, it'll close the dialog. All right, we have two ways in which now we can do our output in our JavaScript files. Okay, next I want to show you how you can use your console as a debugging tool uh, if you have problems with your code. For example, let's just introduce an error in my code here. I'm going to remove the quotation marks around my string, hello world again, and uh, save this by hitting control S and go over to my HTML document in the browser. Okay, now I'm going to see that I have a, a message here, a syntax error. I'm missing a parentheses after argument list on line four. It's really important that you look at your error messages. Again, you can ignore these WebSocket uh, errors, but this one here is a specific error and it says it's on line four of my code. Sure enough, if I go back to line four of my code uh, and look down into my JS hint, or I've got a whole bunch of errors on line four. And so uh, again, I want to look at it carefully and realize my syntax requires that I have quotes around the message inside those parentheses. And as soon as I do that and save the when uh, save the document, all of a sudden, all of my errors are going to go away, except for that console and window not defined errors, which again, you can ignore those. So I save this, go back and test it, and all should be good. And now again, I'm back to this program working without errors. Now, in addition to output, we also want to talk about how do we do input in JavaScript. And so what we're going to do is introduce another function called the prompt. The prompt allows you to prompt your user to input information into your program. However, in order to prompt and accept input from the user, you also have to have a place in which to store that data when they input information. So we need to create a variable. We're going to create a variable using the var keyword and let's create two variables. Let's create first name and let's create another var last name. Okay. I've now created the two variables. I've defined, I've, I've, I've created them or declared them. And now I want to give them a value. So we're going to say, uh, first name gets the value using the assignment operator, which is a single equal sign. I always use the word gets first name gets, and then we'll use the prompt command and then we'll enter the prompt queue in here, uh, something like this. Please enter your first name. If you don't put some kind of prompt there, uh, people won't know what information you want them to input. Semicolon there, same with the last name. And now that we have that information, we've prompted it, they've entered it, and now they, that information is stored in these two variables. Uh, we could use our window.alert like this to say something like uh, you entered and then we could print out what they entered for their first name. You see in brackets that first name variable pops up. As soon as it does, you can just hit enter and it'll fill in the rest of it for you. All right. And how about this window.alert? You entered the last name. Now, what am I doing with that plus symbol there? Um, I am what's called concat concatenating, concatenating, sorry, uh, and which simply means to combine a string, a string that's stored in a variable first name with this other string you entered. And uh, now it'll create one long string that includes all of that together in one output 
inside the alert window. So let's go and test this now. I'm going to save it. All right, now I'm going to hit the enter button to test my program. Here's my first alert. Now the first prompt opens up. My first name is Chris, so I'll enter that. My last name is DeBruin, I'll enter that. And so it'll say, you entered Chris, and I, that's the first alert. I hit OK, the second alert, say OK, and my program is done. So that's how we can do basic input and output using JavaScript, uh, using an external JavaScript file, and using both uh, console.log and window.alert for our output and using prompt for our input. We're going to learn more about this as we move forward. Thanks for watching. See you next time.